this chamber has no windows and no doors. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is the 19th day of Vlogtober and I am here with a first look slash book review. So this is the Phantom Manor book that Park Pioneer picked up for me from Disneyland Paris. If you didn't see my Magic Mail unboxing, I will leave a card up above. I am wearing my Haunted Mansion spirit jersey for this video because I absolutely love the Haunted Mansion. So when I first started my channel in 2018, I really wanted to incorporate books because I used to be a book review blogger. So from 2019 I started to do a monthly TBR video which was saying what books I wanted to read, I'd report back on books I had read, but there were two problems with it. Mainly the first one was that because I pre-film I didn't show you all the books I actually read that month, I showed you how many books I'd read by the time I was filming the next one, so it was a bit problematic. That still kind of happens with my favourites videos but not to such an extent. And also the videos just didn't do very well at all. I guess everybody just wants to see plush from me and doesn't really care about anything else. But I would like to incorporate books a little bit more on this channel. I do put them in favourites videos occasionally. I'm really trying to push talking about books on my Instagram, Lizzie in Disney, but I'm starting to think about what kind of content I can make next year. With me moving out with Joe next year, I won't be able to focus on what I've been buying. I need to shift the focus to things I already own. So I'm trying to think about how I'll do that and if you have any suggestions then drop them in the comments. So like I said, this book was picked up for me by Jo and Andy. I absolutely love this book and it goes with the Pirates of the Caribbean book that I did already have, which I haven't read yet. I have put this book on Goodreads, but it actually wasn't on Goodreads and wasn't going to count towards my Goodreads challenge. So I manually had to add the book, which was really frustrating. So just a little bit of background about Phantom Manor, if you don't know. It opened its doors on the opening day of Disneyland Paris, April the 12th, 1992. So it was an opening day attraction and it is still to this day one of my top three Disneyland Paris attractions with Small World and Pirates. I must admit I haven't been on it since its renovation as it closed on January the 7th 2018. I went in March 2019 and it wasn't open yet. The soft opening was the 30th of April 2019 and the official opening was in the May. So if I had gone on my cancelled birthday trip this year, that would have been the first thing that I did as I'm really excited to see the changes to it. This book kind of spoils it for me, but it's been over a year since it reopened so it was bound to get spoiled for me eventually. So this is the book. It was produced by Inside Ears in 2019. It's only 99 pages long. It does look longer than that, but it only took me an hour to read because there's a lot of pages that are just pictures. One criticism I do have of it is that sometimes there is light text on a light background, which means that people with dyslexia will not be able to read it very well. So it would have been really nice if it had like a CD with like someone reading the book to you. That would have been really helpful. I have very awkwardly filmed me showing you the book, so I'm going to start doing that now. It's by Jeremy Neuer and Matthias de Guyon and it's a bilingual book as it's in both French and English. Sitting atop Boot Hill at the edge of Frontierland, Phantom Manor is one of the most iconic and mysterious Disneyland Paris attractions. It has become iconic due to its uniqueness and remains mysterious due to the shadowy secrets that surround its history. It's split into three parts, a spectacular home, from shadows to paintings, and descent into the abyss. I'm going to show you a few of my favourite passages, I'm either going to read them, or you can just pause them to read them yourself. The enchantment of Phantom Manor begins from the moment we enter the property's gates and step foot in the gardens. Observant guests can find several clues about the history of this once glorious structure, built in the late 19th century by the Ravenswood a founding family of Thunder Mesa. Henry Ravenswood was Melanie's father and owned the Big Thunder Mountain Mine, one of the town's most beautiful areas. Though the house is today considered haunted, it opens its doors to Disneyland Paris guests curious about its mysteries. 
I love that Disneyland Paris has created this story where Phantom Manor is connected to the neighbouring Big Thunder Mountain because it just really ties together Frontierland and creates a more immersive experience. I still haven't been on Disneyland Paris's Big Thunder Mountain but it's on my list straight after Phantom Manor. I'm obviously not going to read the whole book because we would be here for over an hour so instead I'm going to share five facts I learnt about Phantom Manor with you guys. So fact number one, the plaque at the entrance is based on Disneyland's so that they all tie together as Haunted Mansion attractions. However, the demon at the top of the sign was based on Ludwig van Beethoven for this one. Fact number two, the manor's designs are based on original Disneyland drawings by Imagineer Harper Goff. The Haunted Mansion, created in the 1960s by Walt Disney and his Imagineers, is legendary in Disney parks. Though there was no question for Disneyland Paris designers that it would be included in the European park, they thought long and hard about where it would be constructed. The solution came from a 1952 sketch by Harper Goff, one of the first Imagineers who walked asked to create ideas and sketches for Mickey Mouse Park. Among other attractions, Goff imagined a replica Old West Town, and one of his first sketches featured a haunted house recognisable by its isolation and rundown appearance and Phantom Manor is the only Wild West themed haunted mansion. At the top of Boot Hill rises the impressive house that we call Phantom Manor. The shadow of its former self, the exterior of Phantom Manor is a unique case among Disney parks. It is the only attraction of its kind that is done in a Wild West theme and the only one to this day that has a deliberately dilapidated appearance, a unique way to tell its story through architecture. Fact number three, the two main characters are inspired by classic literature, which I absolutely love because Great Expectations was one of my favourite books to read when I was at school. The story of Phantom Manor is centred on Melanie, the abandoned bride who should remind guests of the attic bride of the haunted mansion at Disneyland Resort in California. But at Phantom Manor, Melanie takes on a more central role. Her character development was influenced by classics in European culture particularly Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, which features the iconic Miss Havisham, who wears her honeymoon clothes for years as she awaits her beloved's return. Literary inspiration for the attraction also includes Walter Scott's The Bride of Lammermoor, a story about a young bride and her doomed love. As for the character of the Phantom, it is largely inspired by the famous Phantom of the Opera novel from Gaston Leroux. Fact number four, it is one of the most complicated dark rides by the amount of animatronics it has. Phantom Manor includes over 50 animated props which make it one of the most elaborate attractions ever created for a Disney park. Fact number five is kind of two in one because we've got some facts about the theme tune. The version of Grim Grinning Ghosts in Phantom Manor uses an acapella recording made on February 17th 1969 for the busts in the Haunted Mansion remastered and mixed into a jazzy soundtrack arranged specifically for this scene in the Parisian attraction. John Debney's enchanting lyrical score was recorded in London's famous Abbey Road Studios, where the Beatles recorded, as did John Williams for Star Wars. This book is just so beautiful and detailed with facts, concept art and more. They even include Vincent Price, who stars in my favourite Tim Burton short, and of course they had to include a picture of Walt and a quote from him. So I gave this book five stars on Goodreads because I just thought it was really well made. There's a lot of pictures, both of the present day and the concept art from when they were building the attraction. There's a lot of the history as well. I love that Walt's included. You can't really have a Disney Parks book without mentioning the fact that none of the parks would be possible if it wasn't for Walt. It was a really good price as well, it was 20 euros. You can't use an annual pass on it because there are laws against using a discount for a book in France, which I didn't know about until I wanted this book. It does pop up from time to time on Shop Disney UK, so make sure you check that regularly because that's where I got my Pirates of the Caribbean book from. So that was a short little book review. Like I said, I haven't done one in a long time. I'm a bit rusty, so that was probably a really awkward video, I'm sorry. If you did enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know down in the comments which Haunted Mansion attractions you have been on. For me, I've obviously done Disneyland Paris, I've done Tokyo Disneyland, which is the only one that's in Fantasyland. I've done the original in Disneyland California, and I've done Walt Disney World in Florida. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I will see you tomorrow for another video. Bye!